Now we'll go through a few more examples of these interest problems. $3,000 are currently in a 4.5% account. How much money should be invested in a 3% account to make a total interest payment of $221.40? Let's go to our usual setup where each term is a product of principal and interest rate. We have the first account, $3,000, at 4.5% as a decimal 0.05. Our next account, we have an unknown amount of principal. How much money should be invested in this account? But we do know that it's 3%. So use x to represent the unknown principal, and we know the rate, 3%. We know that this will add up to the total interest, $221.40. Let's simplify each of these terms. 3,000 times 0 0.045 equals 135. 0.03x for our next term with the unknown amount in the principal equals 221.40. So we're solving for x, let's subtract 135 from both sides. Leaves us with 86.40, or just 86.4 on the right, and then dividing both sides by 0 0.03, $2,880. So we can see the amount in the 3% account, $2,880. Our next example is worded a little bit differently, but it's the same idea. This time we're looking at two loan amounts that have an interest rate. Same idea as savings accounts. A total loan payment of $27.52, basically what we used to call the interest, now it's still interest but now on a loan. It's calculated from two separate loans. One is at 1.9%, another is at 2.9%. The loan at 1.9% is three times as much money as the other. How much money is in each loan? Again, we're taking the approach where each term is a product of principal and rate, and principal is the amount of money in that account. We know that we have a 1.9% account as the decimal 0 0.019, and we know the rate in the other account, 2.9%. We know this will total $27.52. Now how can we represent the amount of each loan? What we have to work with is that the loan at 1.9% is three times as much money as the other. When it comes to these types of sentences where we need to translate the words to figure out how to represent the variable, I always start by making x equal the amount that comes last in this sentence. So they're talking about two separate unknown amounts how much is at 1.9% and how much is at 2.9%. The sentence that we're working with, the loan at 1.9% is three times as much money as the other. So the other is what I'm making x. The unknown amount is the amount in the 2.9% account. And the reason that I do that is because it makes it easier to translate this sentence. The amount in 1.9% is three times as much as x. So three times larger than x, 3x. And that's how we'll need to represent the principal in each of these accounts. It came from this sentence which describes how much money is in those two accounts. But what we have to work with is that one is three times as much as the other. So the unknown that came last in that sentence, we make x. So we can see that the first one is 3 times x. Now we have an equation that we can solve. We don't need to distribute here. We're just multiplying a 3x, a single term, by another single term, this constant, 0 0.019. That will give us 0 0.057x. Here, 0 0.029x equals our total, 2752. We've got some like terms we can combine on the left side. And lastly, to solve for x, we're dividing by 0 0.086. x equals 320. So in the 2.9% account, $320. So how much was in the 1.9% account? We had been using 3x. And now that we know that x equals 320, 320 times 3, $960 in the 1.9% account. Moving on to our next example. There are two separate $5,000 loans. One loan has a 12% interest rate. What is the interest rate on the second loan if the total interest is $1,500? You could pause the video and try this one. Use the same approach that we've been taking so far. 
make an equation where each term is a product of the principal and interest rate for one account. So pause the video and try it, and now we'll go through the answer together. The first account we know is $5,000. We know both accounts are $5,000. The first account has a 12% interest rate multiplying by 0.12. The second account also has $5,000 in it, but we don't know the interest rate this time. So this term is a little bit different than what we're used to because we've always known the rates, we sometimes didn't know the principal. We're taking the same approach, just that we know the principal and we don't know the rate. We're just switching what is the unknown in this equation. The same equation, each term is principal times rate and it will equal our total interest, $1,500. We can solve this equation as usual, we're just finding R, the rate of the second account. Our first product, 5,000 times 0.12 equals $600. The second account is our unknown rate, 5,000 R, principal times rate, equals the total interest, $1,500. Now let's subtract 600 from both sides, and now dividing both sides by 5,000 to finish solving for R, and we get 0.18. There's our interest rate as a decimal, so we can call it 18%. Here's our next example that you can pause the video and try, and now we'll work through the answer together. One account has $600 and has an interest rate that is four times higher than an account that has $200. What are the two interest rates if the total interest is $58.50? Same approach. What's our first account, the principal and the interest rate? We actually don't have either rate in this problem. We know the first account $600, we don't know the rate yet. Our second account has $200, we don't know that rate yet either. We know the total interest, $58.50. We do have information about the interest rates. The rate for the $600 account is four times higher than the account that has $200. So the rate for the account that has $200 in it, that's the quantity that we see at the end of this sentence. I'll choose to make it equal X so that when we see the first interest rate is four times higher than x, 4x. Now it's just a little detail, but it's something that can be helpful as we're working through these problems. We have been using x to represent the principal, the amount of money in the account, so that when we get to the solution and we see x equals, we've been used to looking for that x representing the principal, the dollars in that account. But now the unknown is the interest rate, so let's use as a variable instead of x, how about r for interest rate? So we'll simplify each of these terms. 600 times 4r equals 2400r. Here's 200r equals 5850. We have like terms we can combine here, and now we'll divide by 2600. r equals 0 0.0225, our rate as a decimal, so that's 2.25%. R, the interest rate, in the $200 account. So let's still figure out what's the interest rate for the account that has $600. It's 4R, so 4 times 2.25% equals 9%. Here's one last example of an investment problem. You can pause the video to try this one, and now we'll go through the answer together. It's a little bit different because we have three accounts, but we can take the same approach. Each term is one account that has a principal and an interest rate. We have three accounts this time. The first one has an interest rate of 4%. The second one is 3%. The last is 2.4%. And we have a total interest, $210.72. Now the information about the amount of dollars in each account, the principal, we've got two sentences three times as much money in the 4% account as there is in the 3% account. I'm still taking my habit of whichever quantity shows up last in the sentence is what I will use for the variable, x. So x is the amount in the 3% account. And now translating, we see there's three times as much in the 4% account. So three times x in 4%. Now our next sentence, the amount in the 2.4% account is $500 less than the amount in the 3% account. Again, 3% account, we are using the variable x. So the amount at the 2.4% 
is $500 less. So however much was going in the 3% account, $500 less in 2.4%. So x minus 500. Now let's simplify each of these terms. 0.12x for the first term. Middle, there's the 0.03x. The last, we have two terms in this expression, so we will need to distribute. And you might notice that I did write the rates first and the principal second in this example, but we know that multiplication we can do in any order. So no worries that we've reversed the order of principal and rate in each individual term. It's key that each term still has one amount for rate and one amount for principal. So back to this distribute, 0.024 times x and then 0.024 times minus 500. So this is minus 12 equals 210.72. Now we have some like terms on the left side we can combine. 0.174x minus 12 equals 210.72. Now let's add 12 to both sides. 0.174x equals 222.72. Now divide both sides by 0.174 x equals $1,280. x was representing the amount of money in the 3% account. Now we can go to our other amounts. In 4% account, we had 3x. So 3 times $1,280 will get $3,840. And in our last account, the 2.4% account, we had $500 less than the 3% account. So we have 1,280 minus 500, leaves us with $780 in the last account.